Hello and welcome to digi8.com. In this video, we are going to cover the topic on neuromarketing. Now let's start with what is neuromarketing? Neuromarketing is a method used to figure out if commercials or products trigger positive cerebral reactions. Neuromarketing is an approach to commercial marketing communication which uses neuropsychology. It is used for observing affective and cognitive reactions to marketing stimuli, consumer sensory motor and market studies. Neuromarketing is a costly method. It makes use of sophisticated technology and equipment. This includes the electroencephalogram, motion capture for eye tracking, and magnetic resonance imaging (MRI). Moving on to the history of neuromarketing. Neuromarketing combines equipment and strategies from neuroscience and psychology. Neuromarketing was coined by various researchers in 2002. There are studies dating back to the 1990s. Gerald Zaltman is among the very first to start experimenting with neuromarketing. He as well as Gemma Calvert from UK had set up consumer neuroscience firms in the late 1990s. Zaltman, a professor of marketing, came up with the ZMET, that is the Zaltman metaphor elicitation technique. This was patented in the 1990s for advertising sales. Neuromarketing was first seen in a publication in 2002. It was part of the master thesis of associate professor Philip Morel. Moving on to understanding the concept of neuromarketing. Gathering data to see how a market reacts to a product is how firms start marketing a product. People's decision-making process in the brain happens both consciously and unconsciously. The study procedure collects explicit or conscious feelings. It cannot gather the implicit or unconscious feelings of a customer. Non-conscious information has an enormous influence on the decision-making process. That's when neuromarketing comes into picture. Therefore, after behavior and cognition in humans were more well understood, social sciences and biology were also used to develop neuromarketing. Thus, neuromarketing helps in understanding customers. Moving further, neuromarketing field integrates neuroscience, psychology, and marketing. The studies are done to understand inherent impulses and thus customer behavior. Non-invasive techniques help gauge brain activity. As stated earlier, electroencephalography, magnetoencephalography. and functional magnetic resonance imaging eye tracking electrodermal response measures and other neurotechnologies are among the tools employed studies observe and note customer reactions when they confront products or similar stimuli this data is then used by marketing researchers to identify whether commercials or products trigger positive feelings in the brain moving on to neuromarketing tools various neuroscience tools are used for researching customers behavior and decision making Customer neuroscience equipment generally consists of tools that can observe critical physiological functions such as heartbeat, blood pressure, and reflexes, for instance, pupil dilation. Such equipment displays data about impressions, positive and negative feelings, positive and negative reactions in the face of marketing stimuli. Consumer neuroscience equipment is grouped into three according to the kind of measurements: that is, self-reports and behavioral, physiological, and neurophysiological. Types of equipment employed for customer neuroscience studies are EEG. fMRI, fnRIs, ECG, ET, GSR and FERS. In custom neuroscience studies, EEG is regularly employed. Moving on to the limitations of neuromarketing. Neuromarketing cannot be a substitute for conventional marketing techniques. It should instead be used along with conventional tools. This gives a much better understanding of the customer's profile. Neuromarketing helps one understand the inherent motivations of a customer. However, explicit factors that influence the attractions and decisions for customers must be studied as well. Neuromarketing is also constrained because conducting studies can be expensive. Neuromarketing studies need many tools like eye tracking, facial coding, biometrics, EEG, and fMR. These help study customer reactions and triggers. Renting or buying these tools is expensive. There are also charges for renting labs, etc. Now moving on to neuromarketing examples. starting with the first one of fritole fritole used neuromarketing to make women to snack more let's see how fritole released baked versions of all their snacks in 2009 these include cheetos doritos lays and smart food etc this was done to create healthier products for women the firm initially observed that a female audience consumes double that of male audience nevertheless its consumers were primarily men women preferred salty products that was only 14% out of overall consumption The PepsiCo firm tried to find the reason. They decided to undergo rebranding using neuromarketing. Fritolays employed marketing agency Juniper Park headed by Jill Nicolation. They employed fMRI brain scans to figure out how the customers react, especially women. The study showed that in women cerebral activity increased in their anterior cingulate cortex. This part is related to guilt and decision making. 
Women usually feel more guilt than men do. Products had been released with the term guilt free. However, women were still not buying these products. This is because there was an implicit negative association with guilt as a word. This brought consumer attention to these aspects and tried to do away with the word guilt. The focus was to convince the female audience that the product was healthy. The products had baked snacks. They built up an image of equating Frito-Lay to healthy snacking. This was the same as the campaign. Packaging was also decided by neuro-backed methods. Glittery packets were replaced with ones that had a matte finish. Colors like light blues, fresh greens, beige were used. The research concluded that bright colors and matte packets generated more positive reactions. The campaign was a huge hit. In half a year, the PR program garnered 195 million plus positive impressions. This was twice when what was predicted. Women's snack trips increased by 1.8% down the aisle in supermarkets. Next and the final example of the brand Cheetos. Frito, a subsidiary of PepsiCo, has a brand of cheese tasting puffs named Cheetos. They too hired a neuromarketing firm to understand how people's brain reacted when they ate Cheetos. After using the EEG technology on a group of enthusiastic, consenting subjects, it was found that people gained some sort of guilty pleasure from feeling of getting their fingers smeared with orange dust. The brain scanning technology helped the firm to ascertain that customers responded passionately to the detail that eating Cheetos gives them orange fingers due to the residual cheese dust. So that's it folks, this brings an end to the topic on neuromarketing. These are some of the sources and links referred to for the content in the video. Thank you and see you in the next video.